from the Fox Studios in downtown Panama City, it's News View with Lee Sullivan. Let's talk about your endangered freedom. News and views with an attitude. Good evening. It's News View. I'm Lee Sullivan, uh, visiting with Ron Hart, syndicated columnist, and I've been cool. Cool. I've been helping him on his book. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Yeah, about the book. The book. Coming out in November. Uh, it's going to be a collection of columns that are kind of less uh, timely, more timeless columns, philosophical. Uh, it's called, uh, you know, Life, Politics, uh, and the World, and uh, subtitle, Why Daddy Drinks. <laughs> so my kids are do the, doing the forward, and we're going to take some columns over the years, of which I've done close to probably 400 now, and get 70 in there. So it should be fun. Got some great people to blurb it. Uh, Matt Ryan, the quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons, had a little barb in there. It was kind of nice. It says something like, don't buy his book. You'll just encourage him. <laughs> that was kind of nice. Uh, Bernie Marcus, the founder of Home Depot. P.J. O'Rourke, P- my now, hero. Uh, there's a guy. He wrote a quite a nice little blurb for me. And uh, Nick Gillespie from Reason Magazine, the Libertarian Magazine. And uh, Bob Johnson, the founder of BET. A good friend. Wrote a nice little blurb as well. How did you come about it? I mean, I, you know, I mean, you, you, got, you, you got, how how does Ron Hart become a syndicated columnist? Quite by accident. I was never particularly good at writing. I'm too ADD to read much. So, uh, as Bob Johnson says, with, with Ron Hart's new book, he's officially written more books than he's read. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not book smart. I'm kind of magazine smart. I kind of like the snippets and the factual information. So, you know, I'm not going to read War and Peace and opine on it. So, uh, you just collect data. You're ADD. You collect things and you spew them out, and it comes out kind of funny on occasion. It takes kind of a southern uh, perspective, common sense perspective on raising kids, on politics. Just don't spend our money like crazy. Uh, and I make fun of celebrities in there as well. You know, all the celebrities and all of them trying to be, you know, opining on all, all the important political matters just because they're a celebrity. They think all of a sudden they're George Will, you know, uh, Gene Garofalo, and. Uh, Alec Baldwin and the like. And I like Alec Baldwin, a great actor. But anyway, I make fun of them all in there. It's kind of fun to do. November. <laughs> and you will bring one? I mean, I'll bring one, yeah. We'll, I mean, you'll sign able... one for me? Certainly. I mean, I right here somebody, on national television? Yeah, all the, pro, okay. all the wow. proceeds go to my family foundation. I set up a few years ago. It all goes to charity. So if you buy a lot of books, you can get a deduction and give them out as Christmas gifts. I tell people they're 15 bucks, $15 unsigned, $10 signed. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. Yeah. I got uh, Michael Ramirez, the lone conservative cartoonist in the country, to sign on to do the cartoons for it. So we got him on there, which will be nice. And uh, you know, it'll be a nice little libertarian walk through life. And and that takes me to my second uh, part that I want to speak with you about. <clears throat> you have the the Democrats, and you have the Republicans, or they have us. The libertarians. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what would you say, third party in standing? Yeah, I think we're gaining some momentum this time. Uh, I think we're solidifying our position as an alternative. It's just the, it's just two monopolistic parties. You got an oligopoly here, and they're funded by each other. They seem to insist on themselves, and they got a tremendous amount of power. And it's, it's hard to make inroads. And sadly, the, the libertarians tend to pull from the GOP, which would be our alternative if we'd make the GOP act right. As I said in my columns and in books in the past, I mean, in, a, in, a, in my book, we try to reside, us libertarians, within the Republican Party. But we about have about as much power as the law cabin Republicans and not near the nice Halloween parties. <laughs> um, we don't have any, you know, stroke. Now, you look at Ron Paul and his run for the presidency. Now, he's a quirky guy, but he's been right on the five major issues that define the times. So, well, do you think that that when he was right, he he just left a lot of people with the extent that he went with some of the issues? I mean, did he did he yeah. did he leave a lot of support behind when he when he just took it maybe more palatably tolerable? He's a physician. He's a quirky curmudgeon. He's not the best salesman. We we, we elected the greatest salesman in the world last time. This this Obama guy could sell anything. He is smooth, right. <laughs> you know and. Uh, you have to be. You have to have style when you lack substance, and people start to realize he doesn't have any substance. Uh, just the opposite is the case with Ron Paul. 
he was right about Iraq. He was right about deficit spending. He was right about uh, the TSA and, and wiretapping and over, overstepping the civil liberties uh, uh, issues that, that, that they tried to pull off. And he was right about this, uh, the bank bailouts. He was against that. So, I mean, Paul, on the five major issues that are important to this country, he was correct. And he stood against the Republican Party on them. Right. So, and, they, and, 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 paid the, and paid the price. Well, he ran for president. He'll still win his Houston district. He, he'll be fine down there. There's not, there the question is, how, who, who are, who, where's the bench? And you got Jeff Flake in Arizona. you got a few other people that are kind of coming up the ranks. But realize, the original libertarian, the early part of the libertarian party, was really Barry Goldwater. Right. He was probably the most libertarian of all. And uh, th there's a place for it. And there's, there's certainly about discontent right now among Americans. And they're looking for an alternative. Uh, I'd hate to see it lose the election for the Republicans because the Democrats do a Ross Perot and take the votes away from otherwise Republican right. people. But, you know, there needs to be a three-party system. It needs to balance this thing out. It's awful the way it is now. Do you think, there's a, do you think the, the disenchantment <clears throat> is profiled by the NPA, no party affiliation? I mean, it, I mean, you think people tend to more easily gravitate to that than they do to Libertarian or any other third party? Yeah, you've got, and I said in the column recently about the you know, limousine liberals, the type of liberals there are, you've got this 30 percent, which are just rock-solid Democrats. They're your teachers' unions. They're your, your unions. They're, they're your... Um, your service workers, your your uh, and the limousine liberals, the people that inherited money and, and are liberal college professors and the like. Those those are just locked in liberals. They're going to be there because they all get something from the party. Republican side, you got thirty percent locked in. They're all Sarah Palin fans. They they're they're there for the their religious their religious rights and their guns. Uh, and there is you know there's this part in the middle that's supposed to be the thinking part of which I think we include each other in right now. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that that would be broadly shared. But thank you. <laughs> no, I think no, that has to, to sway the party in the right direction, and and uh, because you got these, these these polar opposites that are already locked in, and that's the reason I'm surprised Obama has governed so far from the left because he's got to win that 45 to 55 percent in the middle next time, and those are the people leaving him in droves right now in the polls. What do you think, I mean, what would you presuppose that his mindset is? I mean, do, do you think that he believes that if he is a good Marxist, that uh, then we get really well socialized by the time the election, right. that he can do a Chavez? Here's my philosophy on Obama. He grew up without a father. He seeks affirmation by a lot of people. He was coddled in school. He, he, by his own admission, was not a good high school student. And as we know, all non-good high school students get into Ivy League schools. Hmm. Uh, so through Occidental College, and we don't even know his SAT, he's never revealed it. Bush, Kerry, we know McCain was next to last in his you know, Naval Academy class. We've known all the president's SAT scores, Gore's, and Gore's was higher than, I mean, lower than uh, Bush's, surprised, which surprised everybody. Uh, we don't know his, which is kind of interesting. I'd like to—I've asked for in my columns to both, you know both his and Michelle Obama's SAT scores. Just curious, how smart really he is? He's supposed to be so smart. He gets into Columbia. He's coddled there by very leftist professors. You know, and if you're an African American in an Ivy League school, you everything you do is they, they, they almost rope you off and study you because they don't see enough. You know, and then he gets into Harvard Law School, another very soft area. And he's a community organizer because he's bought into this Marxist uh, socialist view. If you read his books, he's very he's very socialist by his nature. I mean, and then he gets elected, and all of a sudden, the first time in the last three months, he's getting a little bit of heat, very thin skin. He's not being used to being told he's not great. So this, I think that's what's happened to him. Is his hubris, his ego, and I think he's he's empowered by his own poll numbers. And uh, a year, uh, three months ago, Ron Hart. We'll be right back. <laughs> 